Well, welcome back, ladies and gentlemen, to Ion Energy's channel. Mongolia's first lithium brine explorer propelling the electrified future. Joining us, we have the pleasure of Ali Haji, the chief executive officer, as always, to give some insights into upcoming catalysts and some recent results. So first and foremost, welcome, sir. Thank you, Kyle. Always a pleasure to be here. Always a pleasure to get you back on. So we're going to get right into this. But first and foremost, you just ran your ninth line geophysics to kind of calculate, uh, continue calculating the brine volume there. Do you want to give us full clerical insight into exactly what's going on on the ground floor? Yeah, absolutely. So if you recall, back in July, uh, we had provided an update to the market where we had completed eight lines of geophysics with a range of 0.2 ohm all the way up to 500 ohm seen in those geophysics line lines. We identified a low resistivity zone. Uh, we were able to do a ninth line. It's about 16 kilometers long across all the eight lines. And that ultimately not only validates uh, the eight lines that were done historically, but gives you a better picture into the, the volume of brine beneath surface. So on that basis, we were able to use 6.5 ohm as cutoff, and we found that we have 27 billion uh, cubic meters uh, as far as brine beneath the surface. So very exciting uh, for a company uh, to, to find something of that nature. I think if our listeners and viewers were to draw similarities, they would find that organizations, uh, you know, um, I hate to say it, in multiple multiples of our market cap today um, have a significantly smaller brine body uh, beneath surface. And so we're in the midst now of planning our exploration program, and that'll entail some monitoring well it'll go down to between 200 and 350 meters. We've identified where they will go down and we continue to work on the exact locations and the, the precise areas that would provide the best value for the company. And those rigs will be mobilized here in due course. We also expect to have a site visit and the end of September, where I'll be joined by some technical experts, as well as some strategics that are interested in ion energy story and looking at ways to extract the lithium from the ground there. So once we've completed that drilling program, we'll get a sense of our resource. And uh, we expect to, to give the market an update on our resource at Urgatnarn uh, before the end of this year. So extremely exciting times ahead. Uh, we've done a fair bit of work on Urgatnarn this year. I think uh, now that we've seen that brine body and we can come to an early resource indication, uh, we'll have a massive re-rate in our view with respect to not only uh, the interest that we see from strategics, uh, but also in terms of our equity as well. Next year, we plan on doing some work with respect to Bob Iol, where we will mirror the work done on Urgatnarn this year uh, to better understand that asset and identify the brine bodies beneath surface. Uh, but one thing I want to touch on for our listeners here today is uh, Baba Yul is an 81,000 hectare license. So it is quite significant. It's about five times the size of the city of Vancouver. Uh, why that's important is uh, it, it can have multiple minerals on it. And if uh, our listeners recall, in February of this year, we built a joint venture or a reciprocal mining rights agreement with Ranjin Resources. Ranjin Resources was able to identify a gabrolytic deposit of copper and nickel on that asset a significant discovery that they have called the victory deposit. Ion Energy can monetize that deposit because it is an Ion Energy license and we are entitled to 20% of all base metals that uh, Aranjan is able to pull out of the ground. So it's a fantastic win-win situation for both organizations, but more importantly, I think puts Ion in a position of even uh, an even better position of uh, monetizing the assets that we currently hold. I really appreciate these updates today. So from this catalyst perspective, just kind of you mentioned in the next... Uh, six months here or before the end of the year that you guys are going to get that uh, just the brine, uh, the value in the ground there and kind of bring it up to uh, to surface on paper just to give us an idea of uh, the total asset value there. What What's one other thing that perhaps investors should be most focused on? I know you've been visiting that location uh, pretty frequently throughout this year, going back with some of the uh, the explorers, but what, what else should uh, investors just be uh, fixated on? I think investors should be fixated on that volume that I mentioned, that 27 billion uh, cubic meter volume. Uh, that is rather significant. And if you look at the surface samples at 918 milligrams per liter, um, we still have work to do at depth, and that's why we're drilling these deeper holes. Uh, once we received those brine samples from depth and were able to calculate an average grade, uh, you know, you multiply that by the volume, uh, and this thing starts to grow very, very quickly. I appreciate those insights. On that note, we'll pass the question off to the viewers. We'd love to know what you guys think about all this in that comment section below. Consider subscribing because as these catalysts and this news continues to hit the wire, we'll update you here. But stay cool, stay awesome. And as always, we look forward to catching you in the next one.